Well guys, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We're going to be talking about the method feeder because there's two types of f techniques really for carp. If you want to catch carp and you're a beginner, this is for beginners, novices, maybe people coming back into the uh, fishing that have been away for 10 or 20 years. I don't keep up with it all, but the fairly basic way to go fishing is with a bolt rig and a boilie, if you're going for say bigger carp, <clears throat> you sit there, you cast it out with a bag of PVA full of um, your boilies, your bait samples, it sinks to the bottom, you tighten up, they hook themselves. You don't have that, really they hook themselves. All you do is just get up and pick the rod up. Or the other easy way where you can still get some good fish and it's very, very good. It almost is too good. I don't think some places let, let, allow it. It matches, I'm not sure. It's called the method feeder. It's just a swim feeder where you sit, put the feed, right, with your hook bait on top of it. Now you've seen some of my films, I use a, a golf ball feeder and uh, any feeder really. And I've done that, I've squeezed ground bait around the lead weight, anything to get bait out in the proximity of the hook. It's not too technical this one, but it is so easy. I'm using a quiver tip rod. I've got two quiver tips here. I'm going to fish one swim out there, just, I don't know, probably 35 yards, something like that, to give you an idea. And the other one, I'm going to bait it right down here, right in close. I'm going to put some bait out there. So let me show you the rigs and what I'm going to mix up and how the sort of system works. This one really, it's, a, it's, it's something I wouldn't use very, very often at all, but it's extremely effective. What I want to say is it sort of takes a skill out of some of the fishing, like float fishing, free lining, touch ledger, and that type of thing. But hey ho, I'm telling you, if you're a beginner, the method feeder, I feel, is the way to go if you want some action. I'll handhold this one, guys, because I've got to watch the wind. I haven't got the umbrella up for the rain, I hope. I've got just a regular Avon rod here. Oh, I think it's six pound line. A quiver tip on the end, which is a bite indication for those who don't know what it is. And then I've got the business end, which really is from there to there. That's all it is, if you can see that. There is a method feeder and there is the hook. And like most fishing, the most important part is this bit at the end. You can have all the fancy arse tackle you want, rods, reels, gear, beds, bivvies, trolleys, match chairs. You can have whatever you want. Spend a small fortune, and I mean thousands, and at the end of the day, it's this bit down here that catches you the fish. Now, I'll do my best to explain this. Hopefully, you'll get the gist of it, right? This is called a method feeder. So a different, unusual shape compared with a cage feeder. You thread your reel line down through here. I'm just going to pop that out as a little nylon sort of peg, if you like. And then you've got your swivel here. That's a small swivel, I, I should say, and at the other end is a larger ring, okay? So let's just work on that first, because what you do is you push this little peg in there, and there's probably a variety of these around, and then you just push, pinch gently, your swivel in there. And the principle is, you put ground bait over this, you put your hook right in amongst it, it sinks to the bottom, the fish come around and nibble on it, and they expose your one single hook bait right near all the ground bait that are chewing up. They go to swim away, and it's exactly the same principle as a bolt rig. They feel that tug of this weight, then they spook, and your rod top should pull right round. You should get a very, very good bite. So that's why I say it's good for beginners. Now, this is the most important part, really. It's the hook link. So you can see the hook there. Put it on my finger. Now, you buy these. You can tie up your own, but you can also buy them in a tackle shop. I tore the name off the front. <coughs> I'll take these out, it's a bit glary. Hopefully you can read that, right? So these are four inch bait band rigs. We're going to be fishing with a pellet, which is a hard bait. So we're gonna loose feed over the top in here and out there, I'm gonna be using a feeder, obviously. So this is the length of it, it's four inches long with a hook just there. I'm gonna call that a latex band. An eyed hook, which has been sort of whipped or snelled through there, four inches of nylon, but they're not missing about. It's a size 12 hook here to nine pound line. And there's eight rigs in that packet. 
that will save you if you go in the tackle shop that will save you a lot of hassle because you can just slide them on the ring also make sure and it says extra strong so that must be good wasn't it if you go into most tackle shops they will help you and tell you how the setup is there it's, that's the principle of it look how you fix it up just half put your loop through there and then it tells you what to do so so phase two don't lose those ground now I'm going to be using these things these are pellets I'll show you in a second okay now these are sized they are eight mil so you can cut the top along here and you can reseal it so you don't have to use all these and with that I've got here a method mix now I'll tell you what to be honest that is probably what the matchmen use for the feeders I'm purposely going to use my regular old ground bait left over from a trip I had carp fishing here last night and now I can tell you where I am I am at Todd Manor Fishery I did a night car overnight carp trip in one of the other lakes down there <clears throat> I've had a couple of three hours sleep so I'm surviving hopefully I thought I'd come and show you guys up here this one's called homeland homegrown homegrown I think it's lake two islands in the middle it's a match lake pegs on that side pegs on this side pegs along the side and plenty of fish for you to practice with we hope I will just mention if you want to make your own hook lengths up with different strains of line and different lengths as well and put your hook on you're going to want the bait band so you can buy these separately um, oh, well how many's in it who knows 50 100 there's a lot of bait bands in there but as I say those other rigs these ones they come with a bait band on them you need one of these to put the pellet onto the bait band these get some out for you these are the pellets these are quite large these are eight mil but in here there's some carp from i'm going to say three pounds sort of upwards and they smell what do they smell of just this activated cell these smell very very nice mm. so let's get one of these onto that I'll tell you what we do first guys I'm just going to throw a handful down there just to let them get on with it hoping you're going to see this there's your band here's your gizmo for getting the band open you've probably seen it on our barbel you've probably seen this on our barbel fishing stretch it open over the band hold the band as you pop it off and I like to make sure it's right in the middle of the band so we're now ready to put the ground bait into the method feeder now I'm just using this up basically guys and, and, I, and I will catch on this Bailey's number one horse feed bit of brown in there and I've been using it carp fishing so I just want to use it up now now in the bottom there's a little dip there this is how I do it, everybody's probably a bit different. They put their pellet in there like that. Then they put their ground bait over the top of it like this. Squeeze it down. And just this is how I'm doing it push that everybody's different I've been shown so many different ways of doing this so here's the principle you take it out like this pop it down there now you should be able to see there's the pellet on the top it's just resting on the top and then you're already here just to cast that out it sits on the lake bed you can use this in rivers as well but it's better in still water this all dissolves and nibble away and there is your hook bait there is the pellet now I've got some gunk in there so that's made it sticky so it's difficult to get it out of the feeder with this special mix this other stuff I had there is fine so I'm going to use this for a bit of loose feed in there get it going I've chucked a couple of bits in there and then just drop it down in the margins and let them work away this is a match water so I'm pretty I can see by the mudding in the water but I spooked some small fish on the surface then now I've also got the buzzer there 
Because if I'm filming and looking away, I'm going to put it on back wind. I'm going to put it on back wind. I've already seen taps on it. Don't watch the rod type. In fact, guys, I'm just going to sit there. Look, 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 look. <laughs> I, t I told you this method feeder works. Didn't I? I did tell you. Honest to God, that is the first cast in the swim. I'm pretty, I put two balls of ground weight in and the method feeder. I've got two rods. I don't think it's going to happen. And of course, you've got nine pound line here. That was straight on it. So, what I've got to do is A, play this fish. Oh, he's taking a bit of line out now. You can tell I've been on a proper carp trip because I've got my big carp net. I haven't got my match net. We'll play this fish out. And what I'm going to do is, guys, I think I'm going to set myself a target. I don't know what the time is, probably about 11 o'clock. I'm going to try and catch myself on this method feeder so you know it works. A hundred pounds of fish, and I'm not a matchman. And then I'm going to go home and rest because I've done a, already done a night all night carp fishing session. Here we go. Now that's the first fish hooked up. I could tell by the mud down there. I thought this was a two pounder, and it's not, guys. Okay. And you can pressure them with that nine pound breaking strain line and a strong wire hook. Oh, pretty little mirror. We can get him in. See if we can open our account with this one. I wish I bought a match net, I must admit. It's going to be tiring at the end of the day. Now you can use this for big carp as well, trust me. He's an angry one. Let's get him unhooked. Barbless hook falls straight out. I think he's going to go just under four. Wow. Five and a quarter. So there you go, peeps. I've got to write that down and see what we can get. First fish on the method feeder. Wow, that's a chunky fat one. So what you do is you put that swivel back into that little bit of valve rubber so it's got something to tug on. Get yourself another pellet, load the rubber band, stretch it over. As I did say, this is an unbelievable method. There we go. You can see our pellet is there, ready just to ease out. I haven't even gone over there. I, don't, I can't see me fishing two, two rods, I've got to be honest. Just going to drop it. I'm going to let the camera run. I'm on the bottom. You guys keep an eye on the rod. I don't think we need the buzzer. Give it a little. There's plenty of fish, I think, going to move in down there. There's a bite on it there. Just a tiny little tap, it's a quiver tip. I'll hold the camera out there for you. There he goes. See that tap? That's them digging around that ground bait. Now eventually they're going to break that ground bait up and they're going to come to the pellet. The pellet should actually be like this, it should be just free washing around. And if they suck it in and move away with it, they should, should give you a good bite. Oh! <laughs> I missed it, but I think you'll agree that was a good bite. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rod's going off the rest, people. I mean, that's, did you see the, the rod's going off the rest? I did tell you, together with the bolt rig for big carp, that the, the method feeder is just, if you're a beginner and you want a lot of fish, skill factor, not huge, but it catches your fish, and that's what you want if you're a beginner. This one's up on the top. Right, now we've got a target, so I'm going to get to work on this. Do you know if they're all four pound fish, there's actually every chance I could get a hundred pounds of fish here. 
pretty much a little bit smaller he's in he's in the trawl net we've got where's six six is down there call out on five and a half a bouncing five and a half mirror there you go let's get him back I think you got the principle of it we'll see if we can do one more into the realms of the unknown down I'll keep it quite high and you can get an idea of the I just tension I just put a mild tension in that quiver tip they're on it already look 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 I'm just gonna leave it I just I'm more worried about running out of camera battery because I was carp fishing last night I was using two cameras and one I've only got about four minutes left look 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 look, look. <laughs> now that pellet should still be on there my my guess is still on there there we go we go they're still what they're doing is they're chewing around they're chewing around there he goes look 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 he's on boom oh, that's something different that could be a different species this is a small one what the is that a new species or is that something ah oh, i think it's a fukushima goldfish I'm not sure I'll be touching that one. I'm not going to weigh it, I'm giving it a pound. That is a weird thing that won't be touched by me. I'm going to use my PPE for this one. <laughs> what the hell? Look at the fins on it. It's some sort of Prussian goldfish or something. That's weird. Didn't sound good, did it? Got tangled and just broke the tip of my Avon, which I've had all those years. There's a tip going down there, so it's going to be a very stiff quiver tip now. So the snapped off piece is the snapped off piece is hanging <laughs> is hanging down there. So when I bring this in, I'm going to have to take that off. I'm sure I'm going to get a bite on it though. So you can see there's no tip ring. I'll show you. Look, it snapped off there. My fault. I probably had a fracture in it, so it's going to be. And it's oh, <laughs> just just saw that jerk. There's a jerk at one end, there's a jerk at the other. But you can see what's happened. It's, it snapped and slid down the line. No, oh, good, good. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. This is funny enough. Imagine me in a match. It'd be mayhem. What a broken quiver tip. I'll tell you what, I hope it's not one of them uh, Fukushima goldfish. Let's get him in. On a broken rod. I wonder if it's tangled, I won't be able to... Yes, I thought so, I won't be able to get close enough to net this one, hopefully. We're gonna have all sorts of problems. No, I'm gonna get him. Now, I'll switch rods as well. Another mirror, let's weigh him up. As you can see, nice looker. And there's a the feeder. And they're nearly always hooked straight in the mouth there. Well, there he goes, look, 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 he's holding it over. Is he caught in the bottom? Small fish. There you go. Now I'm going to mix this other uh, method feeder mix up in a minute and we'll see if that make, well, makes any difference. <laughs> I don't think it can get better any better. There we go, it's all set. Oh well, I'm, I'm, you can barely call that a cast, can you people? You can't really call it a cast. You can see why I put the buzzers there. Just in case something dangerous comes along. If I'm looking away over there, you can lose a rod, so 
Oh, I'm going straight away. Straight away, guys. I've nearly, I've nearly used that ground bait. It's hard to believe. Am I going to get a hundred pounds of fish? Well, I would if they keep in this size and all like fours and fives. Let's have a look at him. And I believe there are some bigger ones in here. But generally, the method is um, with this method feeder doesn't always get pick off the bigger fish but as you can see it is highly highly productive oh I nearly got him I nearly oh I did get him he came off the hook and I got him look I wonder if I can find him in that net oh well, again it feels a little bit bigger this one what we call a, a weight booster That's the action on a quiver tip rod is pretty good. Here he comes. Let's take a look at him. Definitely feels a bit bigger. Definitely feels a bit bigger. Oh, oh, I can't do much with him. No, he's just a good scrapper. Plane's annoying up there. I guess sooner or later he's going to run out of petrol. Oh, I love these nets. I do love these big nets that catch in brambles. And when you get it out, it lets the fish run off again. God, I just make my wrist ache just holding the net. Should have bought the match net, Graham. Wow, wow, wow. So you can see the principle, it works. Obviously you can use different feeders and it's not just that particular feeder, it's the principle of having your hook bait right on top of uh, where your ground bait is. Oh, that's a, that's a good one, that one. That'll be a weight booster, that one. These old scales nearly as old as I am. Super Samson, who remembers all those? Zero it first. It is six. I thought it was a bit bigger one. That's going to boost me up. Back it goes. Now there is another method you can use. Just purely entertainment, purely entertainment. You can touch ledger. Just drop it down and I'm going to hold it. I'll put my knee out like that. I've got the line across my finger. I slacken off the quiver tip just a tad. And then I can adjust that bend on the quiver tip by moving to the right like that. Or slack it back if I want to go to the left, away from the feeder or towards the feeder. Or you can raise your leg. Or you can lift it. I've got it just balanced there like that. And you can not only, there it is, there's a tap. There's the bite and I'm on. That's called back wine. So you can see entertaining fishy with the old method feeder. You don't have to and you will definitely hit more fish you know when you're holding the rod and I feel that's good experience for you know getting guys to more advanced fishing like touch ledger in free line in that type of thing which is uh, requires a bit of different technique and knowledge this this one you know the, the method feeder is doing it all for you but the fact that you get a bite and know what the small taps are like as a fish gets near it does make a huge difference I'll switch the camera off because I'm running out of battery. I'm just going to throw the last of my last night's bait out. See how ridiculously close I'm fishing. And then uh, we'll try a bit of this feeder mix here. You can see here, look, way, way finer. And that will come out of the uh, mould easier. I don't know what it smells of, not a lot to be honest. I can't make I can't make anything out of it. And don't forget, mix it with water sparingly. Sometimes if you damp it, under damp it, and just look, you can just check the texture, let it sit for a minute. I actually quite like those pellets, I must admit, they might even be they might be better than drought pellets. 
I'm fancying those for big carp. All right, let's try this feed mix. Yeah, how I snapped the tip. Because it's heavy, I doubled it and twisted it and then wound. And that's how I snapped the tip on the other rod. I don't see me using two rods. I don't actually need the buzzers now. Here we go. I don't know the breakdown rate of these or this particular mix, but I imagine a carp is going to tell us very shortly. Ah, oh, just sit back, relax, let them just get onto it and nibble away. There's the first nibble, second nibble. Now they're just about breaking it up off of the uh, feeder itself, which will release that eight mil pellet. So the eight mil pellet will then be loose. They'll be milling around a bit. One will come up and it'll engulf that pellet, move away and he'll feel the weight of the feeder. It will just hold the hook, just prick it in his mouth. He'll go, what the heck? And he'll bolt. And then that's when you get that rod crashed over. So it's absolutely the same principle as bolt rigging for carp really, that's how I see it. Oh, I think my ground bait was better, is it? No, oh, there's a bite. Look, 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 look. All right. And they will suck it in and blow it out, don't get me wrong, this is a match fish water, they're not completely stupid. I'd like to catch just the stupid ones personally. I'm quite happy catching stupid fish. I don't need to be spending days looking for the clever ones. Oh, look, 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 look. <laughs> Yes, yes, people, it works. You can, you, I got four inches of rod butt that time. <laughs> I think, to be honest, I've seen a hold of rod. What a method. That's what it's called, the method. Not a big fish. Joking apart, be careful because you don't need any more than about a three pound fish to pull a rod and reel in the water. And that's an expensive one way ticket. That sounds like military. I've just recently done a flight up with a Spitfire, not in it, following it. He's either put the wrong fuel in that one, or it's a Fokker Wolf from the First World War. It's very noisy. Now look at the size of this fish that nearly took the rod in. I'm saying this just for beginners. People lose rods at fisheries every single year. And he slapped at it, and look, he's hooked on the outside. That's how aggressive they are. Let's weigh him up and get him listed. We might get a different angle if I hold the camera low about there, going up the rod blank. We'll see if we can get a take. That's a tap, that's them nibbling at the... Pack wine, that's what we used to call a churner. That's years ago, we used to fish like that, margin fishing with pace baits, and you'd hit them manually, they didn't hook themselves like this, and they were called churners. Is anybody out there old enough to remember churners, what we used to call churners, when we used to fish for barbel and chub and everything, and get those going around the reel like that, spinning reel handles? Now this one, this one looks a bit different. I'm saying that's got a bit of a koi in it. What do you think guys? What would you say that's got in it? Just that colour on the back there. Beautiful coloured scales. They are some really nice looking fish. And see the top of his eye's got that sort of different colour. When you look at it from the above, when you look at it from the top, when you look at it from the top, you can see the colour markings on there and you can calm him down by doing this. Right, I stopped him thrashing around. That's called tonic immobility. It sort of sends them comatose. Doesn't hurt them at all. You put them back up the right way, they'll go nuts. Tonic immobility. And 
can see, look, he's absolutely dead still. Turn him up the right way, gone. A little tip for calming fish down. I'll do it with the wife, I turn her upside down. Any idea? I, well, I only fish this very, what, once a year or something like that. I think I fished it a couple of years ago, I think I fished over there, yeah. and I had them to low doubles, about 11s yeah, yeah. on floating crust. Yeah, well, I was a couple of years ago here and I fished on the same spot here. It was really good, actually. Yeah, and, uh, but there's, there's, there's no way you see the colour of the mud there. Yeah. I'll just do a bit of filming. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little lake, that, though. Yeah, and the same in that. I think it might be slightly higher average than that. Yeah. That lake. The big, the other match lake I haven't fished, I've not fished. No, I've not been that one, no. Oh, good. But there's, it's yeah, nice to catch a few fish, isn't it? When you that's all I come for. Just fish. I was fishing all night last night, carping on the other one, so I've just come yeah. out here to do another little film on like fishing close in. You've got a camera as well, do you video on? I'm running now, yeah. I'm, just, I'm waiting for the bite. Waiting for the rod to come out my hands. But switch the camera on, it won't happen. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to be casting over there, but... <laughs> There's sort of no need, really. That's a nice fish there. I caught one, though, it was a bit peculiar. It looked like I called it the Fukushima goldfish. <laughs> it was a... Uh, it was, it was like a shabunking or something with a disease. <laughs> I didn't bring me mat. No, that's my mate. He's never seen one before and he's been fishing. That's a fish bait. What, shabunking? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't even... I don't listen to them monkeys. No, 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 no. You don't normally catch anything. That's the fish, Jason. You have one. to fish with him, do you? Yeah, that's the part of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some noise. Do you want to touch it? Do you want to touch it? <laughs> About three pounds. That's the end of don't hook, this is the end of hook goes. Oh, right. <laughs> I find catch them in the towels. They are actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Good luck fishing with them anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah cheers. Yeah, I'd try to have a lake myself. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Right. Two camera and with a audience. Yeah, that was quite. That took a bit longer to get that bite then. Just wait, just wait. There's the first tap. And of course I'm touch legend as well, I'm feeling the line across my fingers. Look, I don't need to, I can see it. You've seen the rods virtually get dragged in the water. And of course I must cast up there so that you get an idea of what the bite is at distance, because don't forget this is margin fishing. So everything's going to be accentuated there. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the actual take of the fish is wallop straight on. I must actually remember to take that. I might have to fish a pair of rods out there to get the fish going a bit. Obviously we've been <laughs> what? Just silly, and I eh? silly. This feed, this method feeder is silly. Actually, I've still left the camera running. And the guy out there still going looking for his charging point. There he is. A lot of mirrors in here. A lot of mirrors. Right, let's write those down. There's... So we got 212. And we got here. Four twelve. We're just doing the I'm you know, just adding these up now. I've got 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 20, 27, 30, 35. I'm watching that rod top behind me. 35, 37. Oh! oh. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even write them down. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? I don't know how many pounds I've got. Guys, we're going to have to switch off. I've got hardly any battery left. We want to finish this film. What a scrap. I've saved, I've got to use a smaller net next time I do this. That's just tying my wrist out too much on the old arthritis. 
Wow, he's off. Is this a bigger fish? No, it's not. Common, common carp, this one. Yeah, I figure if I leave the net down there, a lot less effort, I just, I'm never gonna walk down there because I'll probably get eaten by the carp. Don't wanna stand too close to the water's edge here. Oh, he's popped off. You couldn't do that, could you? You couldn't wrap it around there if you wanted. Twice. Come off. The other thing you get here, when you're margin fishing like this, a float come up. That's weird, there must be a carp that's been broken off on a float. We, oh, there's a, there's a churner, there's a churner, there's, that's a churner, folks. Oh dear. What a session. I only wanted to show you about how the method feeder works. Oh, I've got a double whammy, I've got that float hooked up as well. Somebody obviously bust a fish on a float somewhere. Come on, come on. Ah, it's a black one, very black, this one. Dark, dark colour. Right, guys, that looks about right. Give you a different angle. Just, it's down there. Look, I don't need the I don't need the buzzer to realise that. It's just for me, if I'm filming, I'm making a film. Oh God! It's, oh no! Oh no! It's going to go. Please don't. Please let me talk. Hopefully, you can see that. Can you see that tip there, guys? I'm hoping I've got the right angle. I just thought it'd be good to talk about swim feeder fishing, but the method feeder takes it to a whole different level. I like these pellets, I must admit, these eight mils. They've got, they've got quite a nice smell to them. <laughs> oh my God, I only just got to run again. Anyway, you know I don't speak with forked tongue, guys. Now, I'm really, really gonna tot up what I've got. And wait, I'm gonna weigh this guy up, see what I've got. And they're going to try over the bat there. It would be nice if we could pick a bigger fish up. I'll drop the mic for a second. Generally, I tread on it. This one's a bit smaller. I'm going to call this 212 to three pounds. Well, you guys won't see it. Three and a quarter. Just. Now I'm going to have an add up a weight. I'll tell you what, I was in a match. It must be pretty tiring. So I'm rapidly running out of battery, people. So I'm going to fire a pair of rods if I can, if I'm going to untangle myself out towards the point of that island just to show you if we can get any bites there I'm going to send them both out one after the other because I've got to bait up the the area a bit keep an eye on the rods people and it will just show you might not necessarily be such a distinctive bite. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to go slightly to the point. I mean, ordinarily, I wouldn't need to do this. I'd have one rod out there, but we're just going to give it a try and see. Curve in each of those. You can already see the top of my uh, quiver tip rod there. Pull this up. You might actually be able to see the difference between this rod, which is curved around at the tip, and the one where it's been snapped. It's got a little, I've lost about three inches off it, but then what I do is just gently sand the, <laughs> there you go, look, there's a bite. 
and I haven't put any feed out of the two random swim feeders full of ground bait thrown out. Got to be a flight path here somewhere. Now, if I fed that long enough out there, you'll still get the same principle of plenty of bites. So what I would need to do ordinarily would be to uh, pound that with ground bait. I could do, but it's sort of pointless. Oh, do you see that bite? That wasn't me, guys. Just tighten that up a bit. I would normally pound that with ground bait first and then put the, uh, the feeder out there. But it's sort of pointless because I've got them feeding right down here. So we'll just see if we can pick one fish off out at distance. Same principle applies, but obviously you don't retain the same level of accuracy. Down there, I'm putting it in a six inch. We're on, are we on? Because sometimes they bring the feeder. Yeah, I'm on. Sometimes they bring the feeder towards you. I see bites on the other, I don't know if I've, I've, crossed, up, I've crossed up or not. Well, that didn't take long, did it? And I haven't even, Go under that one, I think. Round the, round the camera lead, round the microphone. Not a big fish. I think he's come off. No, he's still there. The same principle. You've got to concentrate the feed. And I'm going to come straight back here if I get this fish, because it is just clouded beyond belief. And I really, really haven't fed it heavily. Common carp, and it is indeed slightly bigger. And of course I have put the mat all the way over there. I'm going for the suicide cast guys. I'm going to try and drop two down the inside here. One behind the other. Just to see what happens. It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Put them up high so you can see what's going on. I'll put them up high so you can see what's going on, hopefully. Oh, we go. <laughs> There's number one's on. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, I'll keep them to the left. There's the other ones about <laughs> to explode into life. I'd say that's minute that's been out there. This one was out barely 30 seconds. But obviously that's made all the fish bolt. Now they'll come back in again. I know they're back in there because I can see the mud coming up. All right, let's click this off and get this guy in the net and see what our total 58, this will probably put us over 60, 60 pounds, I guess. That's why I got the buzzer, you see I could look, just in case. Oh my God. Right, gonna get this one in the net, guys. It will be about threes, I guess. Well, he's giving a good account of himself, this one. I don't think he's that big, to be honest. There he is. They all count, so it'll get me towards that 100 pound mark. Oh, oh look out, look out. It's on. I've got that one in, and the other one's gone. Is that another float I've just found? What is that? What is that? Anybody? Is that a float? My God, that's a miniature float. Must be a pole fish. I've now got two pole floats. I found that other float that was drifting, by the way. The last fish was the smallest of those, one pound 12. Other than the Fukushima goldfish, which was in the same sort of bracket. No bigger fish yet. Great scrapper, so. Oh, my arms 
striking now. Oh God, no. No, it's, it's had to happen, guys, it had to. It had to happen. Oh God, we're on at the same time. Oh dear. Don't be dead to have that match, is it? Oh, I've got to do You know, you can actually take up knitting. They say it's very therapeutic. I've got to have to stand up for these. It's happened before, and I dare say it'll happen again. That's a good. That might be falling or something. Got to crank on him a bit harder. Well, well. Double method feeder. Almost impossible. <laughs> it's almost a disaster in the making, they're so efficient. That felt like a bigger fish at house, my point. Trying to keep them apart, Go one to the left, one to the right. Oh, they're both heading towards each other. Look at this. That's a way to go fish and, and leaving that all the way over here. If you add to the effect here, the microphone leads around my throat, you can see I'm having a bit of trouble. Right, go for the common one first. I can get him in, I can slack off. Right, one's in. Put my foot on that. Hopefully I can get this one up. It's a feisty one for sure. That'd be a challenge, wouldn't it? Match fishing with two rods. That's a double. Right, just drop that one out. I've actually been adding up. I've definitely done the hundred. What I've done is, oh no, <laughs> shit. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm trying to add up here, people. I'm trying to do my homework. Ridiculous. Let me drop that out. I will have an add up because I've definitely, I've definitely got there. I've got. One column here, and I've had 122 ounces I've added up there. So I divide it by 16 to give me 7.62, but oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I can't even add up. Can't even do my homework. That's with a broken quiver tip. That guy's still not found his charging point up there. The electric top up's over that way, mate. What's going to become of us all when we got to no diesel, no petrol? How are they going to run ships? How are they going to plough the fields? With, with 4,000 U2 batteries or something? We won't be able to have any torches, will we? There'd be no batteries left for torches. And how much of the world are they going to rip up to make the batteries? I've definitely got 100 pounds now. I've got to stop putting this rod in the water. It's just ridiculous. I start again. I'm not putting any more. I'm not putting any more method feeders in there. It's just ridiculous. So, I've only been here a few hours. I've definitely had more than 100 pounds. As I was saying, I've totaled all this up, pounds and ounces. Divide the first batch. 122 by 16 is going to be 7.62 pounds. Brackets, 7.62 pounds. Yes, I have no idea what 0.6 to a pound is, call it eight ounces. So I've got 58 and a half pounds, effectively, there. 
writing like a child, Graham. I've added all this one up. That last fish was three, 12. 12, 49. So we go at 49 and three quarters. 49 and three quarters. That is a quarter. One, two, nines are 18. Carry one. Five, nine, 10. I have weighed here 108 pounds. And I can assure you this afternoon, if I wanted to stay there, not mess around with the camera, not do this, I would do 200 pounds. Honestly, I'm not saying that. Now the biggest catch, the biggest catch I've made in fresh water, because I didn't do matches, or no interest in matches whatsoever, interested in their techniques, was, um, it's in one of my Go Fishing for Carp books. Um, it was, somebody would tell me, 303 pounds five, or 305 pounds three. Either way, I did over 300 pounds. That was weighing them individually like this. You know, in, I think we weighed them in twos or threes. Tell lies with Nigel from the tackle shop, our local fleet tackle shop at the time. And I remember I caught over 50 pounds of that 303 on a fly rod. So that's something different. Probably if you had a sunk fly, you'd probably catch them on a fly, I imagine. So, you know the method works. I've had a blinding session, I mean, Yes, not big fish, nothing over, what was it? It was five, four, five, a one of six, fives, fours, mostly fours and fives. Really good scrappers on an Avon rod. I can remember quiver tip rod. Anyway, for beginners, novices, give that method feeder a go. You might not want to fish it all the time. You can see it is extremely, extremely effective, no question. And I'm well impressed with those eight mil uh, cell pellets, I have to say. A lot of fish in here, it's a match water, there's a match water, a match water, they're all over here and they all do the same thing. Just as a guide, in the tackle shop, they've got a good tackle shop here at Tobber, Mark was telling me he thought they had a world record, a five hour match, one rod, I think it was 600 pounds. Well hang on, if I stay this afternoon, I'm gonna double that, I'd have 216 pounds. And then I'm thinking, that guy's catching three times faster than I'm catching. That's match fishing at the top level, it's scary. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I hope there's some tips in there for you. Hit the TA Fishing Outdoors, TA Fishing subscribe buttons, hit more, hit what you want, I don't care. If you hit them, great. If you don't, I'm not bothered to make the films anyway. We'll see you guys next time. Just don't take your eyes off the rod if you're fishing the method feeder. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, it's in. <laughs> Thank goodness for that.